Let's take a look then at the lineups for the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Mamadou Sack, the forward for Southern Illinois. Kendall Brown, Searles, TJ Lindsay, Dan Teal, Daniels, and Jeff Early are the starting five for the Salukis. The 11th different starting lineup they've featured on the season. They are led by head coach Chris Lowry in his eighth season, 143 and 104, a two-time Valley Coach of the Year. They've struggled the last three seasons trying to turn it around with some young talent this season. So the starting lineup for the Blue Jays. In the middle for the Blue Jays, Gregory Echenique, the center, 6'9", junior. Doug McDermott, the sophomore, second in the country in scoring. Grant Gibbs, junior guard. Managa, the other guard, along with Antoine Young. There's the starting lineup for the Jays. Head coach, Greg McDermott, in his second season with the Jays, 38 and 18 overall. Bringing in the Jays, ranked 23rd nationally. And the keys to this game tonight, Nick Ma. All right, Larry, let's start with Southern Illinois. They got a guard the three-point line. Great length, ranked second nationally in three-point percentage as a team, 45%. Key number two, they got to get back to transition defensively. Creighton really plays fast. And key number three for Southern Illinois, got to contain Doug McDermott, second leading scorer in the country. And for the Creighton Blue Jays, Key number one, they got to take care of the ball. Southern Illinois leads the Missouri Valley Conference. They're ranked 31st nationally in steals per game. Then they got to rebound the ball. That allows them to get out and run. And they also got to keep Mamadou Sek off the offensive glass. Key number three, tempo. Same thing, got to get out, get easy baskets in transition. Utilize the depth of the Creighton Blue Jays. Those are your keys, Larry. So, Jays and Salukas, we talked about an upset kind of day around the Valley. It has been that way. The Creighton Blue Jays clearly the favorite coming in here tonight against the Salukis, a team that really features a lot of not necessarily young, but new players. Certainly nine new guys to this lineup that maybe have struggled gelling to this point in the season. That's one of the most difficult and important things to do in college basketball is to develop that camaraderie between the guys on the floor. And that's something Southern Illinois hasn't been able to do. And on the other side, that's exactly what makes Creighton so special. Although they've had to implement a handful of new guys, Talking about Grant Gibbs, and you have Will Artino, Austin Chapman, Avery Dingman. The chemistry on the floor and the way they play together is, is truly a sight to behold. And that shows in, in the stats, ranked in the top 10 nationally in five offensive statistical categories. A lot of that has to do with the chemistry on the floor for the Blue Jays. Lindsay and Early, the two guys you just saw on your screen, two of the newcomers to this Saluki squad, both played junior college basketball last year, but integrating Kind of that chemistry within the team has been one of the issues for head coach Chris Lowry in his eighth season. So ready to tip it off here at the Century Lake Center in Omaha. It's one of the hardest things to do in, in, with junior college players is usually takes about half the season for them to get really comfortable. We have multiple junior college players trying to really make their presence felt. It can be difficult. And Chenique and Daniels to tip it off. Underway on a Sunday evening in the Valley. Echenique gets the tip. First possession for the Jays. There you see 11 different starting lineups for Southern Illinois this year. 17, now 18 games through the season. They've been mixing it up. Dermott has it down low. Makes it back up top. Southern Illinois starting that many different lineups. It's hard to establish roles, Larry. That's one of the most difficult things about playing that many different lineups. Jumper on the way by Young off the back of the room. McDermott gets the rebound back up strong. That rolls off. Echenique has it. Picks it back up top, and the Jays reset. Good activity on the glass. Two great players in Echenique and McDermott. Not sure there's a better front court, not only in the Valley, but in America than those two guys. Echenique down low, looking on Daniels. The turnaround can't get it to go. Back up for McDermott, and a foul called down low on Mamadou Sek. Important for Mamadou to stay out of foul trouble. He's key offensively and defensively. As you mentioned, he leads them in so many categories. And he's, without question, the best player for Southern Illinois, and he's the most valuable player for Southern Illinois. And those guys have to be careful and pick and choose their spots when they want to get aggressive defensively. First one on the way from McDermott is good, and the Jays on the board. 
Doug McDermott comes into the night averaging 24.2 on the season. Has been on fire, the second leading scorer nationally. It's both of them and the Jays with their early, early 2 0 lead. The most impressive thing about Doug McDermott is the fact that he does it so efficiently. You look at his numbers, better than 60% from the field, better than 56% from three. Lindsey drives the lane right by Manigai and gets the lay in. Jays push it the other way. Manigai back inside. Echenique has it tipped away. They will call the foul down low. Ball fouled on TJ Lindsey. His first foul, team second on the Salukis. Quickly, though, the Blue Jays, even off of the main basket, got it out, pushed it in transition. And Echenique and McDermott do such a good job of sprinting and doing their work early in the post. You see Echenique now at the free throw line. All three of the Jays' points coming from the free throw line. 3 2. Echenique double double at Butler with 12 points and 12 boards, 14. In his two games in his career against Southern Illinois, he has two early. Down low, turn around by Sec. Tried to throw it back in, did early. And it goes off of Grant Gibbs and out. It will stay with the Salukis. You see, Sec, not the most skilled player in the world, almost throws a knuckleball up for a shot. But he's just so active in everything that he does, and he'd rather put the ball on the floor a handful of times and go up there. That's not his game fading away. This is going to be such a physical game. Southern Illinois Creighton always very, very hard fought. And although Southern Illinois' record's not near what it used to be, they still have the same DNA in terms of playing hard. Boy, what great hustle there by Gibbs down low, swatting it goes off of Gibbs and out. So it will stay with Southern Illinois. The shot clock now at five. I'd like to see how many floor burns Gibbs has <laughs> accumulated here in the season so far. A guy that always, always is on the floor. Lindsay takes it late in the shot clock. That goes off of the Jays and a fresh clock and the ball for Southern Illinois. So amazing to watch Coach McDermott walk through scouting report with his Blue Jay basketball team. So detailed, walk through every single set play they've seen on tape, exactly how they want to defend it. So detailed. As Earls hands it off to Early. Goes down low to Sec, tipped away by Echenique. Talked about the tradition of these two teams. Traditional powers within the valley. Jays push it the other way. It's been a rough three years for the Salukis. It's an understatement. Had some guys transfer, a variety of things happen that really, really caused Southern Illinois some problems. Three is off. Rebound pulled down by Daniels. 13 and 18, 15 and 15, and 13 and 18 in the last three years for Southern Illinois. Chris Lowry admitted he feels pressure to win. It's a tradition-rich program, which is saw five NC2A appearances as a travel call on Managa. He saw five NCAA trips from 2000 to 2010, and now they see the grass yeah, Chris Lowry was a part of those, obviously, and he understands what this program was built on. Guys like Brian Mullins, Jamal Tatum, Randall Falker, Brian Shaw, different guys that all did a really good job in terms of doing what he wanted on the floor. And it seemed like that group left and somewhere along the line it was lost in translation in terms of exactly how things get done. And Chris Lowry, you know, he's no fool. He understands what, what's to be expected at Southern Illinois. And after having so much success for a stretch of five years, as you said, the collar getting a little bit tight for, for Coach Lowry. Chapman's Jones Artino now into the game for the Jays. 4-2 here early on in Omaha. Down low, the turnaround by Drinker. Can't get it to go. Gibbs pushes the other way. Early post up is where he's really good. Dermott can't get that to go as well. Now the other way. Searles. Brown Searles will drive in. No 
shot foul on the floor will be called on Grant Bring Gibbs. Foul, Gibbs is Grant first. That's his first personal foul. The Blue Jays first team foul. Stutter step and go for Kendall Brown Searles. They will be opportunistic in transition. Southern Illinois will, and Creighton's got to make sure they get back on any made shot or any missed shot. It gets sorted out. First things first, you have to do stop the basketball. Treg Setti now into the game for the Salukis. Jump hook down low. Drinker can't get that to go, and the rebound in the hands of Artino. Their first five field goal attempts. A team that enjoys great success offensively. Haven't been able to get it going. Good dish down low. McDermott finishes on the pass from Martino. That's where this team's really special. Back door from Gibbs, and he immediately gives it up to McDermott, flowing right to the rim, making that extra pass. 6 2 Jays. Al Searles with the shot. Rebound goes to the floor. It will be. Off of early and out, and the ball will be with the Jays. So a little more than four gone here at the Century Link Center in Omaha. The Creighton Blue Jays on top of the Salukis, 6-2 early on. Back at the Century Lake Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Creighton on top 6-2 here early on. We talked about the non-conference start and the slow start for Southern Illinois, a 3-8 non-conference, in part due to a number of key players for the Salukis missing. Kendall Brown Searles missed six games with academics. Drinkard missed six with academics, a suspension, injury, illness. You see the list. But finally, they're all back together, and Coach McDermott can see the improvement of this Southern Illinois team. Same they had thing some that injuries early, they had some suspensions early, and recently is when they've had their entire team intact. And, uh, you know, as you can see, they're playing much better basketball than they were in November and December. They're, they're getting back to the way Southern used to play. They're t tenacious defensively, they have great ball pressure, really pressure the passing lanes and make that difficult. Uh, and, you know, offensively, they, they've got some guys that are really shooting the ball at a high level, and then Mamadou Sek inside and driving it, that, that creates a, he's a matchup nightmare. So. Coach Lowry's got them back where he wants wants them to be. They're, they're playing very competitive basketball, um, and we know we're going to have our hands full tonight. You, know, you obviously look at it, all those things, and it makes it very difficult for that guy right there, Chris Lowry. You, same thing with those different starting lineups. You can't establish roles, then you don't have the depth, and then the captain obvious statement of the day is you're not as good when you don't have your full roster intact, ready to go. You're not going to be as powerful of a team. So Chapman now at the point for the Blue Jays. Gibbs with it. Off the screen by McDermott. Tries to feed McDermott. Now down low. McDermott looks inside. And a foul down low will be called on Jeff Early guarding uh, McDermott. So the first foul on Early. Third team foul on Southern Illinois. Both two of those three fouls have come against McDermott down low. McDermott again. Double team down low, puts it on the floor. Gets that to roll in. Six early for McDermott. You see how relentless he is with the up and under and even lost it, but goes right back up and can finish. You gotta like the lineup that's on the floor for the Blue Jays from the standpoint of Coach McDermott wanting to get those guys on the floor, get bench guys more minutes. We've seen that rotation shrink as Valley plays rolled around, but that's not what Coach McDermott really wants. Top kicks it outside to Setti, the three-pointer by Setti off the front of the rim, and his shooting woes continue for the freshman. Nice steal, though, by Setti. The team that leads the Valley in steals, they push it the other way, and the foul will be called on Chapman, and that will send Jeff Early to the line for the Salukis. Where you have to be careful. You said it leads the Missouri Valley Conference in steals as a team, Southern Illinois does, and that's when they'll be really good. They're not great in the half court offensively, Southern Illinois. They struggle to go against a five set defense. So when they can get out in a broken floor situation and convert, that's when they're going to have to pedal to the metal and really go at the basket hard. You can see that as Early attacks the rim. So early now at the line, averaging seven points per game. First one is good. He also leads the club in steals with 24. 
mentioned 8.7 steals per game for Southern Illinois, best in the Valley. That's going to be really important for the rest of the game, keeping an eye on those turnover numbers for the Blue Jays. Have to take care of the ball. You've seen already early on Creighton going back door to try to alleviate some of that ball pressure as they've been taking away passes. You have to do something to keep this Saluki defense honest, or they're just going to continue to push out and push out and pressure. Josh Schwann, the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, now into the game for Southern Illinois. Gibbs off the screen. Great foul to be called. Well, Artino, his first personal foul. On Artino on the screen. A little bit of a moving screen there by Artino. Well, more often than not, it's usually on the ball handler if there's a moving screen, but it's your job as the guy who's receiving the screen to wait for the big guy to get completely set and go off of the screen. And I think Gibbs got a little bit antsy there, and that's what that ball pressure can do. Went a little bit early, and Artino was still moving. Got an offensive foul there for Artino. More substitutions for Greg McDermott. Dingman now in the game, along with Ethan Rock. It's also important to go deep in your bench because you're talking about playing four games in eight days in this Brutal Valley conference slate, and you have to make sure you have depth. Setti over the top of Rocky there, and Trek Setti. With the first made field goal since the first one for Southern Illinois. They had missed eight in a row. Three point out of the way, and that's what Rocky comes in for. He buries the three. Rocky coming off an outstanding game where he hit four of six threes. One of the best shooters in the Valley, Ethan Rocky, and he's really settled into his role as an assassin off the bench. And Goff right back at him. Courtney Goff with the three. Big shot for the Saluki. He's got to have production across the board if you want to be successful against Creighton. Young, nice pass down low. Echenique underneath, and he's fouled by Setti. That'll send Echenique game to the line. Foul number 35, Trek Setti. That's his first for the team's fourth. Pass from Antoine Young. Senior out of Bellevue West. He's led the Missouri Valley Conference in assist to turnover ratio for two straight seasons and picked up right where he's left off. Good decision looking at the basket for Echenique. Drawing another foul. So Echenique, the junior from Venezuela, rolls the first one in by way of Rutgers. Had really gotten off to a shaky start from the free throw line this season was a 70% shooter last year from the free throw line has really shot the ball well from the free throw line the last three four games which is really important because he's going to get fouled a lot almost looks like he's got a little limp going yeah. four for four from the line is Echenique tonight his numbers on the season just 55% as you mentioned it was due mostly in part to that rough beginning In the lane, the floater by Bocott and a foul down low on the Jays. That'll be called on Managog. Jahiz Managog with his first personal. So Bocott will go to the line. Justin Bocott to the free throw line for Southern Illinois. Managog, a guy that really keeps things loose around that Creighton Blue Jay bench and locker room. And Certainly does. You've already seen some, some YouTube videos make its way around Twitter and Facebook of the guys singing a little bit of Usher and <laughs> dancing in the in the locker room. And Jahan's man, a guy usually the, the guy's going to lead the charge in those situations. Great guy, great energy giver. Free throws missed by Bocott. So now the Jays, a four-point lead and the ball. Pressure and the deny. Take Creighton out of an offensive set. Great pass by Managa underneath. Young closely guard kicks it back out. Rocky, second three for Ethan Rocky. Alleviating the pressure. Antoine Young with the backdoor pass and Rocky buries a three. He's a guy you might want to find beyond the arc and he's going to knock it down. Goff with it. Picked up his dribble, now off to Bocon. The freshman with the three-pointer just off. 
And Seti can't find the range. The other side. Dingman's got the team. Avery Dingman with the three-pointer. The freshman from Branson, Missouri. Bears it all. And a timeout. 8-0 Creighton Blue Jay run. Three of four from downtown. One of the keys to the game, guarding the three-point line. And the beauty of this Blue Jay team, it's not just one guy that's knocking down threes. You got Ethan Rocky shooting better than 40% from downtown. Jahens Managa better than 50% from downtown. And Avery Dingman, 50% from beyond the arc. You have multiple guys that can take and make threes, and it's so difficult to defend. Well, tonight's Creighton game is being carried live over the internet, so if you'd like to check us out, just go to netnebraska.org and click on the Creighton basketball webcast link. Friends, family can watch anywhere right home on their computer. NET Sports is your home for Blue Jay hoops. 19-9, Creighton Blue Jays on top. But really the key right now for the Jays offensively is doing something to alleviate the pressure. And right now it's been back doors that have really freed up and softened up the Saluki defense and opened up some shots from beyond the arc. Brown Searles now back into the game. He's got it. Shot on the way and Brown Searles who averages 10 a game. Puts it in for the Salukis and stops that 8-0 Jays run. Big shot on the road, on the ropes, call a timeout and score. That's a perfect recipe to alleviate a little bit of momentum. There you go. 13 on the shot clock for the Jays. Madigan with it. Looks down low. Can't find Echenique. Young will drive. The shot by Young will rattles out of there. And then a foul will be called on Echenique underneath. Well, first personal on Echenique. And the score 19 11. 23rd ranked Jays at home with the lead. Brighton Blue Jays on top of Southern Illinois in the Valley, 1911. Here's a look at some national scoring leaders. We told you Doug McDermott's second in the nation, averaging 24.2 a game. Damian Lillard of Weber State at 25.8. As Lillard missed last year with that ankle injury, a foot injury that he had. Back this year with an extra year playing the point for Weber. But McDermott having an outstanding year, 24.2. He came into tonight needing only seven points to reach 1,000 in his sophomore season and about halfway through his sophomore season he's got six night one away from a thousand career points one away stay tuned you're gonna see him go past a thousand see him doing his work in the post look at me be able to lose it and go right back up and score has done a good job so far getting the Jays some points in the paint but the difference is you, you saw that list of leading scores None of those other guys are shooting 60% from the field. That, that's the most impressive thing about what he does. And really, when he scored 44 points a week ago at Bradley, he was 18 of 23 from the floor. And you look at some of his missed shots. He missed two layups and had to force up a three at the end of the shot clock. He could have easily been 20 of 22 from the field. It's just incredible. And a lot of those shots are pretty difficult shots, little hook shots off the glass. It's unbelievable. And there's a proud father of Doug McDermott, his father Greg, the head coach of the Blue Jays. And the, and the change in the caller ID from dad to Coach McDermott, just for, just for a couple years here. That's right. They've really both handled this situation extremely well. Father, son, coach, there could be some problems that come from that, but helps when your son's the second leading scorer in the country. And that's what Bob's going to get a lot there. of problems, doesn't it? Inside the nice move down low by Dantiel Daniels. Daniels with his first two of the game. 55% from the floor. Daniels is a little up and under there. we been watching McDermott film or something. Said, I'm gonna give that one a try. It's a turnover again. This is where they're they're pretty lethal. Bocott the other way, kicks it back up top. No one call from Daniels who drives in. Daniels with his own rebound back up top. Good ball movement out to Swan, and Swan is off McDermott with the board. Steel. Bocott. You begin to see why the Salukis lead the valley. The foul and 
the shot is good by Bocott. Bocott went into contact hard there, forced the foul on the Jays, and really gave him no choice but to call the foul. It was close there. It was Coach McDermott wanted to walk, and it almost looked like, watch his right hand as he's going to kind of use it to push off Antoine Young ever so slightly. Probably not enough contact, but nevertheless, a great finish from Justin Bocott. Comes into the game, is really aggressive to score and really aggressive to run through passes. Back to back turnovers for the Blue Jays. All of a sudden, just like that, three point game. That eight point lead has dissipated since our last timeout. Five straight by the Salukis. Gibbs with it up top. The three on the way by Rocky. Boy, catch and shoot. Turn around by Rocky. Three for three for Rocky. That's 12 bench points for the Blue Jays now. Rocky with three threes. Dingman with one. How about Ethan Rocky coming in off the down screen and buries it. Rocky with 14 points off the bench against Illinois State in that game where he had four of six down low. His Daniels goes up strong again. And finally the rebound pulled away by Gibbs, but nice work down low by Daniels to keep it alive. Gibbs drives in, he draws the foul, can't get the shot to go. Josh Swan will pick up his first foul. You can see there the effects of Ethan Rogge setting the ball screen, but the hedge guy can't help because Rogge's knocked down three threes, so Gibbs is able to go unimpeded all the way to the basket and draw a foul and shoot two free throws. Rocky obviously last year medical red shirt with plantar fasciitis but he was all freshman Missouri Valley Conference his first year and led the Jays with 68 three pointers on the season so a very capable player but when Big Etienne Ike comes in and Doug McDermott's having the season he has Ethan Rocky's had to take a, a different role but he's really embraced it and that was flourishing it. There's Rocky going to the bench. He, along with McDermott and Managa, make up three guys who are in the top ten all time in three-point percentage for the Creighton Blue Jays. But that's not a bad team. We've got no. guys in the top ten all time on one team. And when you couple it with willing passers like Antoine Young and Grant Gibbs, and then you have great inside players like Gregory Echenique that can attract attention. So look, we've been talking about it, how good of a job this coaching staff has done is fitting all these pieces together so well. Drive by Swan, the pull-up can't get it, but Dermot rebound. Where they want to really push, get some easy looks. Gibbs with it, back to McDermott. Inside Echenique. He'll back down on Daniels. Echenique tries the reverse and foul. Foul will be called on Josh Swan. That's his second foul. Now 16 fouls on Southern Illinois. So Echenique back the line for the fourth time tonight. Third time is five five fouls. Such a good thing to see for him to be able to knock down free throws because he. Going to get fouled, going to spend a lot of time at the free throw. All five of his points coming at the free throw line. That one off, five of six now. Jays on top, 25-16. They've opened it back up to a nine-point lead on a 6-0 run of their own. His drive kicked outside early with the shot off the rim. Gets his own rebound. Sec haven't called his number a lot tonight. Sec wants the shooting foul called. Oh, yeah, they'll give it, they'll give it to him. Yep. That's his second personal foul, which is 17 foul. And that's what they want to do against Sec. They want to collapse off guards on Sec, and he does get the ball in the post, and Chapman there just gets his hand caught in the cookie jar and ends up getting called for a foul. With the bucket, his first point of the game. Antoine Young returns. The guy the they need line. to get going if they're going to stay in this game with the Jays. Not about it. Zach leads them in scoring at nearly 14 a game. Second free throw, good. Now 25 18. And McDermott, one 
shy. The thousand. And a foul up top. We called on Devontae Drinker. Four, Devontae Drinker, that's his first personal foul. Devontae picks up the, the foul. Jays into the bonus. And the Jays now in the bonus on the seventh team foul for the Salukis. That's a risky run when you're going to play really aggressive and, and the really the pressure the ball, Jays. take away passing Three, one, lanes. You run the risk of drawing a lot of fouls. Brayton's done a good job of staying aggressive and now going to be at the bonus for the rest of the way. Players Young, the second team All Valley performer from last year, puts the first one in. Extends that lead to eight. Young has scored in double figures in 10 of his last 12 outings. Second one, he buries it for the 70% free throw shooter. 27 18 now. Equals the Jays' largest lead of the game. Now low, here's Mamadou Sack working on McDermott. Kicks it outside. The open jumper is off. Rebound McDermott. McDermott's been active on that defensive board as well. Young strong to the basket. He will be fouled. Foul called on Brown Searles. And once again, Young back to the line to shoot two. Tanike was almost a lead blocker. Watch him take out Drinker and then take out Kendall Brown Searles a little bit. And Antoine has a wide open path to the basket and draws a foul. He needs to get a little lower off the line on those blocks and get a little too high yeah. early, right? Young's free throw is good. Substitutions for Southern Illinois, number 12, T.J. Lindsay, number 24, Dr. Taylor. Bingman back in. Lindsay also in for Southern Illinois. And Diamond Taylor into the game as Echenique goes to the bench. This is a Saluki team that likes to pick up early. They'll double in the half court. They'll run a lot of players in there. They've averaged playing 11 players in each of their last five games. Or they've played 11 in each of their last five games at least. When you're going to play that hard defensively, you can't save any energy. You're going to have to have a lot of different guys that can come in and give you minutes. Those 11 players averaging 14 minutes per player, all 11 at least. There's McDermott. Backs down the turnaround off the glass, and McDermott now has 1,001 points in his career. And you hear the announcement here in the arena, and the crowd comes to its feet to honor that outstanding sophomore. Doug McDermott. And the leader goes. 31 to 30. What a fitting way to get his thousands basket. You see that shot, a little right-handed hook shot. Go down off the glass. Outside the three on the way. A bit long by Jones. Bounce Searles the other way. Bounce Searles will drive. Little help defense there by Artino. He'll be called for the foul, and that will send Brown Searles to the line. So the Jays on top, 31-20 already. McDermott with points number 1,000 and 1,001 in his career. Programming is made possible by the Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, NebraskaSoybeans.org. And by Nebraska Lottery. Proceeds from the Nebraska Lottery help support the Nebraska Environmental Trust and the Nebraska Scholarship Fund. Learn more at nelottery.com. And back at the CenturyLink Center, along with Nick Vaughn, Larry Putney. Good to have you with us. Creighton on top of the Salukis. And there is Doug McDermott, 1,001 career points in just his sophomore year. And all kinds of numbers we can look at and the rate in which he has reached the 1,000 point mark in his career. Here are some other early achievers in Creighton history. Good company right there. Mason Portman, Paul Silas, and Rodney Buford. Obviously, Rodney Buford, the all-time leading scorer for the Creighton Blue Jays. But all those guys did a good job getting out and scoring early. And Doug McDermott now over 1,000 points. You look at 
some of the other guys that have done it recently. Antoine Young went over 1,000 points this season. You look at Kenny Lawson Jr., P. Allen Stinnett. Here's the 1,000 point right there. Over that left shoulder, right hand jump hook. He's been a special player for two seasons on the hilltop here. Unbelievable, 47 games to 1,000. Put that into context, it took Rodney Buford 59 games to get to 1,000 points. Wow. Really, everybody else taking over 80, a lot of them over 100 games to reach that 1,000 point mark. You're witnessing something really special yep. here, Blue Jay fans and any college basketball fan. Every time you go over 1,000, it's impressive, let alone in basically a season and a half. So back to the line to is Kendall Brown after the foul. Cuts that lead to 10. The second one rattles away. So 31 21. 6.50 to go here in the first half of play. Creighton Blue Jays and the Southern Illinois Salukis. Drive by Young. Great reverse, and he got it. Beautiful attack of the basket. Hit that seam. Refused the ball screen. And again, that's Doug McDermott affecting things because he can't come off and help. Rebound underneath. Back up strong. Goes set. Sack with the bucket. His first offensive rebound said how he leads the Missouri Valley Conference in offensive rebounds a game with three. Dermott on the hand. Foul will be called on Devontae Drinkard. That'll bump a Dermott back at the line. Dermott with eight points in the game. Three for five from the floor, two for two from the line. It's amazing. A lot of people would ask me over the summer if. I think Doug and McDermott can have the same production in terms of numbers. I, I don't know, man. He really had a good season in terms of numbers. And it really was his experience with the USA under 19 team over in Lithuania this summer, where he averaged 11 points per game and six rebounds per game and led the team in three pointers. That seemed to kind of take his confidence level from confident to extremely confident. And he just rode that wave of confidence into the Bahamas, a preseason trip, and has never really looked back. So far. So perfect from the line is McDermott. Now with 10 points in the game. Yeah, it's difficult to say. You have a, you have a guy coming off the, he, the first freshman to be first team all Mo Valley since 51 and 52. Led the league in you know freshman scoring, right? Best year ever as a freshman at Creighton. And, and to assume that he could elevate that. It's is uh is pretty is pretty crazy. I mean he scored over 500 points as a freshman, so to sit there and you know, think that he could elevate that is, is very hard to imagine, but he has totally exceeded a lot of people's expectations. And just amazing what Doug's been able to do. So TJ Lindsay will now go to the line for the Salukis. Lindsay, one of those two transfers from Monroe College, along with Early. Early and Lindsay led the Monroe College Club to a 31 and 5 record last year in a junior college final four. So two guys any team would bring in. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when you bring in junior college players it's because you've got a hole or a void to fill in terms of some sort of production area whether it's shot making rebounding ball handling and they needed a shot maker Southern Illinois did and Lindsay 42 percent from downtown. McDermott left handed dribble drives the lane and he's fouled. McDermott back to the line again. The foul will be called on Dan Teal Daniels. And although Doug's improved a little bit off the dribble, this is still the area he needs to take even more of a step because he is such a good three-point shooter. I'm talking about a guy that shoots over 56% from downtown. So guys are going to close hard on him, and he's got to be able to put the ball on the floor at least two or three times to get to the basket and either draw fouls or get layups. And he's improved in that area, but, man, once he really refines that, he's going to be even more of a handful. McDermott on the year, shooting 81% from the line. Perfect in six attempts tonight. And now McDermott will go to the bench and take a break. McDermott heads there with 12 points in the game. And the Jays now with its their largest lead at 37-24 by 13. Down low, Mamadou Sekou top 
up to Taylor. Levi Taylor, Brown Strolls with the long rebound, puts it back up. Small sky on the floor, right spot, right time. Offensive rebound put back. I don't know how many of those Kendall Brown Searles has had in his career, but that's a big one there. Hips with the dribble. For Echenique, Young into the paint. Oh, left hand and can't get it to go. Echenique with the rebound. A shot clock for the Jays. Seven rebounds for Echenique. Gibbs driving in, and Gibbs will be fouled. He goes hard into Dan Teal. Daniels picks up his second personal foul. And now the double oh, bonus for Creighton. That's his third personal foul. Third, third personal on Daniels. Gibbs has done such a good job this season distributing the basketball to his teammates. Taking a lot of pressure off of Antoine Young to make plays because Gibbs has been able to manufacture baskets for others. Transfer out of Gonzaga has been really kind of the difference in last year's team and this year's team. Second one from Gibbs is good. And Gibbs now extends that Jays lead back to 13. 39-26. Taylor with it. Now Courtney Goff will drive in. The pull up by Goff is off. Rebound to Gibbs. Gibbs looked inside for Echenique. Being bodied up by Daniels. Off the screen, Gibbs with it. Gibbs will drive in. Back down second to turn around. Nice shot. Grant Gibbs with two. Big junior from Marion, Iowa. Dixon chooses his spots to be aggressive offensively. Gets a mismatch off of the ball screen switch with Mamadou Sek on him. Takes him to the lane. A little half spin turnaround jumper for Grant Gibbs. Sack puts it on the floor, kicks it out. Three pointer by Taylor. Got it. Diamond Taylor buries the three. 12 of 38 from downtown on the season. A guy who will be aggressive and hasn't shot it well yet. Gibbs. Rolls off in the rebound to the Salukis. There's TJ Lindsay spins in the lane, call for the track. So the Jays on top 41 29, inside four minutes from the Century Lake Center in Omaha. All right, Blue Jays fans, look into your wallets, Texas pockets, Jays have been shooting well from outside the arc. That trend just continuing tonight. Four of seven. Showing why they're the second leading three-point shooting team in the country. 45%. Dingman and Roggy, the main guys off the bench, lining them up and knocking it down. Roggy, three threes. Dingman with one. Four of seven from downtown. Reminding the Salukis what the rules are. Hand down. Man down. 57% for the Creighton Blue Jays from outside the arc. And that has led them to the lead, 41-29. Oh, we talked about it being an upset kind of day yeah. around the Valley, and you take a look at those two scores on the bottom, both of those uh, beginning to separate the pack. Creighton, Wichita State at the top, and of course, Missouri State losing along with Northern Iowa. Yeah, it's this team, this conference right now kind of eating itself alive here as Northern Iowa goes to winless Bradley and loses, and then Evansville after losing at home to Drake with a big win today. Just an unbelievable conference start here as anything can happen. And that's been proven as the Jays have had been in dogfights in almost every single outing here as they've been on the road and almost lost a game to Bradley, almost lost the other night to Illinois State. So you certainly got to lace them up, be ready to go every time you play in this conference. Missouri State falls to four and three, Northern Iowa three and four. Nice pass. McDermott inside to Gibbs, who finishes. His first dunk of his college career, something his teammates would give him a hard time about, never getting a dunk. Now, how do you know that stat? Because he told me. That's, <laughs> <laughs> he had told me that they had been giving him a hard time. 
<laughs> so that was what the smile was about. Yeah, and Van Gaal was smiling on the sidelines. <laughs> you know, that's the last thing. Gibbs and I had a lot in common. Now that he got a dunk, we don't have that. We don't have that in common anymore. <laughs> well, he scores every once in a while too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Taylor at the other end. McDermott drives in off glass. Pretty move. Pretty move by Doug McDermott. Proving me wrong, telling him to improve his game off the dribble a little bit. Nice. Body contact and finish. Said he's got it in the paint. Off the front of the rim for Treg Setti. So now a 13 point advantage for the Jays, 45 32. Equals Creighton's largest lead of the game. Looked inside, McDermott calling for it. Setti on him. Setti doing a nice job down there, very active. You have to match his activity level in the block. Boy, good drive by. Set him into another zip code with the left jab and going right all the way to the basket for the Iron Man Antoine Young. Goff with at the point. You see the field goal percentage by both teams. The Jays shooting at 57 percent. 34 for the Salukis. Lindsey with it. Lindsey very good off the dribble. Played point guard in junior college. Came in, started at point here, but they really needed that shooting power. Yeah. They moved into the off guard, two guard. And he's really picked up his shooting, as you mentioned, above 40% from three point range. Gets the bucket to go there. But a versatile player can do a lot of different things, but it's been more of a catch and shoot guy. A foul on the ball. Diamond Taylor with the foul. Gibbs does such a good job of snapping that head back. Anytime there's any contact and it looks like a foul, he does that all the time to draw fouls when he's driving to the basket. Just a crafty guy. So Grant Gibbs now to the line. Gibbs a 6'4 junior out of Linmar, Marion Linmar in Iowa. Traditionally known for its football. Grant Gibbs. See his number, second one is good. He's a guy that basically can't even practice on a daily basis because of his left knee. See with a wrap. It is giving him big time problems. So it's impressive that he's been able to maintain the flow and chemistry with his teammates without getting it done on a daily basis on the practice floor. Lindsey kicks it out. Goff, a skip pass back up top. Out down low, Daniels. Backing down on Rocky. Misses the shot, Rocky with the rebound. Three-pointer up top. Young left it for him. You have every right in the world when you've knocked down seven of nine threes in your last two games to take a 24-footer in transition. <laughs> At least that's how I see the game. I don't know if Coach McDermott agree with me. Secondary break, Coach. <laughs> it's called heat check, Coach. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Diamond Taylor. Diamond Taylor drives in, gets the bucket. Greg McDermott will take a timeout. 35 seconds left of the game. I'm sorry, before half. And the Jays on top by 12, 48, 36. Jeff Creighton came in five and one inside the valley, and really has not only been. Impressive at home this year. They won lost Missouri State, but especially impressive on the road. But they've only won, they only won two games on the road in the Valley play last season. And this year, that's been the difference in this team. Their ability to finish games. Creighton had so many leads and so many close games that ended in heartbreak last year in the conference. And they found a way to pull out those games. And obviously lost their first game in conference play at home against Missouri State. But really since then have done a good job defensively and, and certainly offensively. That's where this team's at their best. And having just another typical half for for the Creighton Blue Jays. Shoot, you know, averaging 51 percent shooting as a team and shooting 54 percent from the field and just doing a good job sharing the ball. 17 assists and 48 points. This is something Coach McDermott talked about at shoot around was running this what he calls a spread look where you got McDermott and Rocky in the corners the shooters and Gibbs and Jones that can make a shot and Antoine Young in the middle. See if they'll just let him go and attack or if they'll bring a ball screen. Looks like McDermott's 
moving around. Inside 10 seconds, they'll start the offense. McDermott from three. Off the front of the rim, chases his own rebound. Saluki's come away with it. Lindsay ahead, fires up the shot just before the buzzer. It doesn't go. So we're at halftime at the Century Lake Center in Omaha. The Creighton Blue Jays on top of the Salukis at the break. Along with Nick Baugh, I'm Larry Putney. Halftime at the Century Link Center in Omaha. Creighton Blue Jays on top of the Salukis, 48-36. Well, we've been talking a lot about how much time these players put in on the court. Well, tonight we wanted to show you what they've been up to off of it. Over the Christmas break, the Creighton men's basketball team made a visit to Methodist Children's Hospital. And for one of the players, the visit had a special meaning. Hey, matter of fact, I think when I had my open heart surgery, I think I was either here or over there. Junior guard Josh Jones reflected on his time at Children's Hospital when he underwent open heart surgery as a high school senior at Central. An experience that gave Jones an extra sense of compassion on this visit. Oh, you got cowgirl boots. Santa came and gave you some cowgirl boots? Oh, man. Wow. Oh, wow. I like the cowgirl boots. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. So which one can slam dunk? Can you all slam dunk? This one? Him. Everybody, everybody but him. There was a Fisher, Fisher Price hoop in the playroom, and I think maybe I can handle that. I love it. I was in their position at a point in time. With Olivia, with a cowgirl boot. And, you know, I, I believe that it feels great to know that people actually still care about you when you're at your lowest point. Hi, you guys can go on in. This is Josh. Josh. Great name. My name is Josh. How you doing, Josh? I'm, I'm Josh. That's Coach Matt. Does it, does, does it ring mean anything? Fast. Oh, okay, the class That's ring, huh? Hey, cool. check that out. <laughs> you went to, uh, hey, this is cool. Hey, check this ring out. Hey, you're trying to get one of these at the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's cool. I wish I didn't get a class ring when I graduated. I'm sure you graduated? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why you didn't get one. Maybe that's why I didn't get a ring. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you, Josh. Nice, yeah. nice to meet you, Nice Josh. to meet you, nice to meet you. And in the last room of the day, the Jays met their biggest fan. All right, let's show me she is a huge fan. Uh -oh. Oh, <laughs> Can I quiz you since you're a huge fan? Yeah. How long have you been following Creighton basketball? Two years. Two years. So, who's your favorite player? I'll bring him to you right now. Um, Janique Gay. Hey, where's Gregory? Hey, Janique Gay. Why do you like Gregory? Here's the man. Hey, 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 what? Do you like his dunks? He caught me off guard, and uh, and I think it, I mean it definitely made my day. I uh, I wasn't expecting it, and uh, and I thought he was cute, and she knew how to say my last name better than a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you take stuff for granted, and you don't think uh, you can make an impact on somebody that you don't even know, and that young too. So I thought it was pretty cool. I'm not sure who was more excited. Yeah. Was it a Jimmy K or I don't know. That's, that's good. Great. You know, that's really the Jays do an awful lot. You're certainly a former player. You played here. It's something that the coaching staff, the administration, Creighton as a school really takes a lot of pride in. It makes a point of doing. It. Yeah, well, obviously you're so visible as a basketball team. And whenever you can do something to lift the spirits of people that are going through something that is way more important than any basketball game, talking about battles with life. 
You, you have to do it. You have to embrace it. Incredible story there. Well, just job well done there for the Creighton Blue Jays. We're at halftime at the Century Lake Center. Jays on top of the Saluki, 48-36. We'll be back.